Hey guys, in this video let's review Saviors of Sapphire Wings and Stranger of Sword City. As usual, let's check its story, gameplay, graphics and music. Saviors of Sapphire Wings presents the classic story of Light vs Darkness, but there is a little twist in the way things happen. The game starts right when our team is in the Demon's Lord Castle, and in that last battle things go out of hand real quick, and for a change of turn the good side loses the battle. After this, some cinematics start explaining that because of this loss, several places were taken by monsters. After the death of the main character, 100 years in the future, there is hope once again. In general, it is a good story filled with likable characters and a mix between serious and funny moments, depending on the answers you give to the NPCs. But also, it is perhaps a bit predictable because of the main topic that the game has. To me, it is an eighth. On the other hand, a Stranger of Sword City starts in a different way, showing us how an airplane is about to crash, and that's when the main character of this story finds himself in an unknown place. Right after traversing this place, there is a wyvern ready to attack, and that's when another person saves the main character. After a rough beginning in the journey, we get to know a place named Sword City where they explain that people from our world sometimes end up falling in airplanes, and these kinds of people can share some crystals with the vessels of this world. On this end, depending how we proceed, we can see three sides of the story. From this point onwards, it is up to us revealing the truth of this world. This story was much more intriguing, because there is a link of what happens in Saviors of Suffer Wings, and once you start getting to know the whole conflict, it is a cool story, but it is not perfect. The ending reduces the tone of how everything was built up. Other than that, in my humble opinion, it is a 9. It is going to require heavy reading and of course finishing two games to understand the whole conflict. That's just in a depth level, but that is not a must, unless you want to understand everything. Both gameplays are quite similar. We are talking about first-person dungeon crawlers where you can create at some degree the kind of characters you want to use in your journey. And regarding this, Saviors is a first good step in the genre, because it is not a hard game, compared to others in the genre. You can have a group of six characters, with a main class and later a subclass, to share some skills. Some of the hard things in the game is understanding some puzzles, some backtrack to find items that weren't accessible at first, also sometimes there are gimmicks in the dungeons that may throw you off balance. What is cool is that there are several dungeons with different ideas, and perhaps just a couple of them feel a bit too long. Regarding the character customization, it is also quite simple, because as you increase levels, new skills are unlocked as well as the subclasses, so managing characters isn't that hard. And personally, I just found in the main game one hard battle. Of course, if you want to spend some more time in the game, there is a good post content waiting. It is an A. In a Stranger of Sword City is where you will test your character management in a quite interesting way, because here you can create your characters however you want. And there are multiple paths that you can create, because you can change classes whenever you want. The game more or less explained this to you, but if you also plan to tackle the post-game, you may want to really optimize your units, otherwise it's going to be a hellish journey. Here the dungeons have much more personality. Perhaps at the beginning of the game not so much, but as you proceed there are different ideas presented to you. I wouldn't recommend this game to new bros in the genre, because it is a hard game and it is a bit slow, and if you try to rush things, your whole group may end up dying. And here it matters, because every character has life points, and if you lose all of them, the character is lost. You can get back those life points, but it takes some in-game time. That obviously is going to demand a good strategy, and if your management skills aren't that good, you may have to retrain some new units or grind a good amount of time. The other option is just look for a guide, but I think that takes some of the fun out of the game, because that is pretty much one of its selling points. Make your whole party and have a hellish adventure. Personally, the way it is presented was a lot of fun, but I say that as an experienced dungeon crawler. To me, it was a 9. Solid gameplay and extraordinary character customization. 
The graphics of both games are decent, nothing particularly crazy, perhaps Saviors of Sapphire Wings has a better look in its dungeons, but the aesthetics in Stranger of Sword City captivated me much more. And knowing that both the stories share a kind of timeline, we get to see some of the same monsters here and there. It also depends if we compare the sprite movements of the enemies. In some games of the genre, they do not have movement, and here sometimes it look a bit funny because they animated these sprites by stretching them. In general the dungeons and enemies have interesting designs, but also, as many other RPGs, they end up using something similar regarding the sprites, just changing colors. Maybe in a stranger, this idea is a bit more interesting because you can see a kind of progression between the lesser monsters up to boss classes. Savior is an 8 and a stranger a 7.5. And last but not least, the music. Both games share boss tracks, but oh my god, what a boss tracks they have. Saviors was a bit underwhelming in its dungeon atmosphere, because you will end up listening to the same tracks a good chunk of time, but those boss tracks are perfectly on point. However, a Stranger of Sword City takes the lead by miles, or kilometers, whatever the system you use. It is so full of energy, quite different from the classic RPG soundtrack. Yeah, we have the well overused, but beautiful violin, but we also add some error instruments, giving it a way different vibe to the whole game. Also, the kind of tracks used in the dungeons have interesting atmosphere. In summary, Saviors is an 8th and a stranger another 9. Beautiful soundtrack. With this, the final score of both games are Saviors is an 8 and a stranger 8.6. If you plan to get this game, just beware that there seems to be some issues in Steam regarding controls and stuff like that. The physical copies of this game are quite scarce, but you can find it in the eShop. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.